Heavenly Father. A woman came with an alabaster jar of oil. She broke it. And in tears, washed your feet. Kissed you. Kissed you. Kissed your feet. Akabusu miguyako. From the time you entered, kutoka leo wakati uliko mengia, the house, ile nyumba of the Pharisee, nyumba ya Farisayo. She broke her wealth and poured it upon you. Akavunja utajiri wake na akakumiminia. And the same words you spoke upon her. Na neno lile ulilomwambia is what we seek today. Na bado tunalizungumzia hata leo. He looked at her and said your sins are forgiven. Ukamtazama na ukamwambia dhambi zako zimesamehewa. Let your fire come and cleanse us so that we can be forgiven. Wacha moto wako uje tutakase ili tukaweze For we are a people full of confusion and sins. Kwa maana sisi tumejawa na dhambi na kuchanganyikiwa. Lord, Bwana, show up. Show up. Onekana. For in the book of Matthew chapter 9, oh God. Maana kitabu cha Mathayo 9, eh Bwana. A man was brought down who was a paralytic. Mtu akaletwa aliyekuwa ni kiwete. And you told him, son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven. Na ukamwambia mwanangu tabasamu dhambi zako zimesamehewa. But before you told him lakini kabla umwambie the bible says you saw the faith of the people who dropped this man biblia inasema uliona imani ya wale watu waliomteremsha jesus yes do when everyone complained you asked when everyone complained you asked na kila mtu alipokuwa akinungunika ukauliza which one is easier to say Gipi rahisi kusema your sins are forgiven you or rise up and take up your bed and Dambi. go to your house Dambi zako zimesamehewa ama amka chukua kitanda chako uende sako Father in this church today we ask for both Katika kanisa hili eh baba tunaomba yote We've been lying on a bed of self pity for far too long cause us to rise up pick our beds and move on Naweza kuwa tumejirhurumia kwa muda mrefu tusababishe tukainuke na twende let your fire do the talking wacha moto wako ukanene we commit this service to you tunaikabidhi ibada hiyo kwako and we ask you to change us na tunakuomba ukatubadilishe in jesus name katika jina la Yesu amen amen If you are able to stand in honor of the word of God kindly do so. Kama unaweza kusimama kwa heshima ya neno la Mungu na kuomba ukaweze kufanya hivyo. Turn with me to the book of Hebrews 11 verse 1 through 3. Hebrews 11 verse 1 through 3 quickly. Twende pamoja katika kitabu cha Waebrania 11 moja hadi tatu. This is what we read. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Can I hear you? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the world were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible basi imani ni kuwa na hakika ya mambo yatarajiwayo ni bayana ya mambo yasiyoonekana maana kwa hiyo wazee wetu walishuhudiwa kwa imani tofahamu ya kuwa ulimwengu uliumbwa kwa neno la Mungu hata vitu vinavyoonekana havikufanywa kwa vitu We live your the hiri 
Faith is to a believer what fuel is to a vehicle. Imani ni kwa muumini vile mafuta ni kwa gari. Just like water must be in order for nature or and all creation to be, then faith must be if we are to exploit. Vile mbavyo maji ni muhimu kwa uhai, hivyo hivyo imani ni lazima iwepo. So that we can exploit, uh, do exploits for the Lord or even be with him. Ili tukaweze kutenda makuu kwa mwana au hata kuwa pamoja nae. Faith is what moves mountains. Imani ndiyo huhamisha milima. It's not the eloquence of words. It's not the power or the muscles we use si to petition God. Si ufasaha wa lugha au uh, uzito wa misuli ambayo humshawishi Mungu. It is by faith. Ni kwa imani. In Matthew 19 and verse 26 we read Katika kitabu cha Mathayo 19 But Jesus looked at uh, at them and said to them With men this is impossible but with God all things are possible. Yesu akawakazia macho akawaambia kwa wanadamu hilo haliwezekani bali kwa Mungu yote yawezekana. There is nothing that is impossible with God. Hakuna jambo lisilowezekana kwa Mungu. But the possibility in God is moved by our faith. Lakini uwezekano kwa Mungu hufanyika kwa imani yetu. It doesn't matter how much God wants to do. If our faith is limited, it will remain undone. Haijalishi Mungu anataka kufanya nini kwetu ikiwa imani yetu ni ya mipaka itabaki haijatendeka. Faith therefore is more than saying I believe. Na imani ni zaidi ya kusema naamini. It is the knowledge and assurance of what you hope for. Ni ufahamu na ya, ya, ya kile unajua na kile unachokisubiri. Ni ufahamu na udhihirisho wa kile unachokisubiri. Amen. It is the assurance of what you hope for. Ni hakikisho ile unayotumaini. In other words, let me put it this way. Faith is a blank check of what you hope for. Kwa maneno mengine, imani ni hundi iliyo wazi ya kile unacho tazamia. <laughs> in other words, faith grants you what you write in it. Uh, kwa maneno mengine, imani hukupatia kile unacho andika. For those who don't understand checks, checks, a check is a leaf that is written by someone who has an account that has money to someone either to pay them or to buy something or whatever it's a it's a tool of trade to transact financial transactions wale ambao wafahamu hundi ni nini ni karatasi inayomalikiwa na mtu mwenye account ya benki yenye pesa ambayo humpatia mtu mamlaka ya kutoa pesa if someone comes and writes your name on that check then where the amount is supposed to be written is blank, the guy is trying to tell you, spoil yourself. Mtu atakapo kuandika jina lako kwa cheki na akwambie andika ile pesa unahitaji, yeye mtu amekupatia uhuru. He's trying to tell you, you can never deplete my account. Anakwambia, hawezi ukamaliza fedha zangu. When God gave us faith, he gave it to us without an amount as to how much we can spend in our faith. It's Mungu, a blank check. Mungu alipo tupatia imani haku, haku tupatia mipaka ya kuandika. In fact, he said faith as little as a mustard seed. He talked of the bare minimum, but he never spoke of how much you can go beyond that. Alizungumzia imani kama chembe ya heredali, lakini haku zungumzia wingi wa imani. How are you using your faith today? Most of us are using our faith in the negative things. I was seated somewhere yesterday and someone started talking of how things are going to be bad politically. And he was very open with me. He said, Pastor, 
naona kikiumana 2022 naona that is his faith but deep inside me i was like hakuna kitu kinaumana when jesus is on the throne all things oh hallelujah fall in place according to his will and desire if our faith will be lifted up nothing can go wrong kama imani yetu itainuliwa hakuna jambo litakalo koseka faith is a blank check imani ni hundi iliyo wazi what are you writing on it today je unaandika nini juu ya hiyo hundi i just read a few verses when i was praying about a paralytic okay okay paralytic and alikuwa akisoma alipokuwa akisoma vifungu vichache alikuwa anasoma historia ya mtu aliyekuwa ni kiwete don't worry most of you think i sleep in heaven and then i come in the morning on the, to to where you guys are no i was born by a woman so blame it on my mother my mother tongue sometimes uh, messes my tongue default settings all right now the paralytic okay i got it right and the woman with the alabaster jar of oil were both told go your faith yule kiwete na yule mwanamke aliyetoa yale mafuta wote wakaambiwa nendeni imani yenu Jesus saw the faith of the men who were dropping this man from the roof when he saw their faith he told the man your sins have been forgiven you let me tell you there is nothing that moves Christ apart from faith hakuna kitu kinachomgusa Kristo kuliko imani what is your faith today Imani yako ni nini leo? And what are you building upon this morning? Na ni nini unaijengea asubuhi ya leo? Hebrews 11 verse 6 where we've just read but we go to verse 6. Waibrania 11 mstari wa 6 says that but without faith it is impossible to please God. Lakini pasipo imani haiwezekani kumpendeza. It simply tell it is simply telling us that faith is the password for everyone who wants to please God. Na inatuambia imani ndio neno la siri la kufanya upendezwe na Mungu. We can't just appear in his presence. We must first and foremost believe that he exists before we can enjoy his presence. It is faith that causes us to believe that he exists. Hatuwezi tu kujipatikana mbele yake inatupasa tukaweze kuwa na imani. Even the most doubtful person on earth has faith. Hata yule mtu ambaye anashaka kuu sana bado ako na imani. Even the most doubtful person on earth, even an atheist has faith. Hata yule ambaye anashaka kubwa sana bado ana imani. Can you all stand up? Je, tunaweza kusimama? If you can. If you are not nursing a baby, stand up. Now sit. Stand up again. Sit. Stand up again. Now sit. You see Peter you have to have faith in your pastor. You are trying to get a shortcut by remaining uh, on your position. But let me tell you. Wacha nikwambie. If you thought you didn't have faith, you've just exhibited faith. Kama ulikuwa unadhani hauna imani, tayari umedhihirisha imani. None of you when you stood up looked behind you to see whether the chair is still behind you you just sat without confirming that's faith what mmeketi bila kudhibitisha kwamba kiti iko hapo and nobody went looking whether it can hold them they just sat na hakuna mtu alijaribu kuhakikisha inaweza kumbeba nobody went to a weighing scale to find out whether the weight changed before they sat Hakuna mtu alijaribu kuhakikisha kwamba uzito wa hiyo kiti ilibadilika. You have just exhibited faith. Therefore I'm talking to the right people in this service this morning. Kwa hivyo umedhihirisha imani kwa hivyo ninazungumza na watu wa sawa. The beginning of this year I said to face 2021 like never before, desire like never before. Nilizungumzia katika ule msururu wa mafundisho ya kwamba 
kupata uh, katika mwaka huu ni lazima ukaweze kutamani bila hujawahi kutamani the second point was obedience like never before obey like never before na pili ni ukaweze kutii vile haujawahi kutii and last sunday my oh my i was driving to nairobi and i was watching mombasa lighthouse na Jumapili iliyopita alikuwa akielekea Nairobi na akitazama kwa mtandao And as we were driving with my wife we are just approaching at the river my voice I mean my voice just went mute and I was like my goodness this is what we need to hear Sister Esther brought it like never before and said desire to hear his voice like never before that is our third point na tamani kusikia sauti ya Mungu vile haujawahi kutamani na hiyo ndio kipengele chetu cha tatu and i want to build from where sister esther left us and say number four, have faith have fruitful faith like never before not just faith but a fruitful faith a faith full of fruits na nataka niendeleze kutoka mahali nana esther aliachia ya kwamba ukaweze kuwa na imani izayo the key to fruitfulness funguo ya kuzal, kuzalisha or to have a fruitful faith is believing lau kuwa na imani inayozaa matunda ni kuamini if you don't believe forget the fruits of faithfulness kama hauamini sahau matunda ya imani 2021 it's my prayer as a church we are going to have a fruitful faith like never before in your workplaces in your family in your school in the church in yourselves we are going to have a fruitful faith like never before ni maombi yangu ya kwamba huu mwaka tutaenda kuwa na imani inayozaa matunda vile haijawahi kuwa our faith is not going to be restricted like the faith of the people who eat mogoka and cut mera na imani yetu haitakuwa na mipaka kama wale watu wanaokula miraa you know when they are on that thing and they are high they build skyscrapers and the moment they spit the miraa out of their mouth you ask them what were you saying they can't even tell you what they were saying unajua kama wamelewa hiyo miraa wako na maono makubwa ambao baada ya kuwa soba ukiwauliza hawawezi kukueleza they are usually like wajua bwana mimi vile naona bwana hii bahari utaibadilisha iwe swimming pool nakwambia hapa tutatoa supu hapa kwenye bahari hapa they talk things they, by faith if you tell someone who is doing cut to walk on water like peter they will walk then <laughs> but their faith ends at the point of spitting the cut lakini ile imani yao huwa inaishia tu baada ya hiyo miraa kutoka Mark 9 verse 23 to verse 24 Marko 9 23 hadi 24 Jesus said to him If you can believe all things are possible to him who believes Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears Lord I believe help my unbelief Yesu akamwambia ukiweza yote yawezekana kwake aaminie mara babaye yule kijana akapaza sauti akasema naamini nisaidie kuto kuamini kwangu the father had come to seek Christ's help because the child was sick baba alikuwa amekuja kutafuta msaada kwa Kristo kwa maana mwana alikuwa ni mgonjwa Jesus never went theological and say oh i am the word that was sent to heal your diseases and i'm declaring by my word the child is healed touch Yesu hakuingia katika theolojia na kuanza kusema mimi ndio niliyotumwa kwa hivyo wacha kijana apone He says if you can if you can believe ukiweza amini if you can believe ukiweza kuamini all things are possible to him who believes yote yanawezekana kwa yule anayeamini for fruitful faith to be realized you have to believe ili imani ya kuzaa matunda ukaweze kuwa nayo ni lazima ukaamini Do you believe that Jesus is able to narrow the gap that is widening as we speak Je unaamini kwamba Yesu anaweza kuleta karibu ule utanganisho Do you believe that Christ is able to change your family member who has gone astray and is not looking back to see whether God is waiting for him 
Je, unaamini kwamba Yesu anaweza kumbadilisha yule jamaa yako ambaye amerudi nyuma? Do you believe that God is going to expand your business? Do you believe that God is going to raise to see your children become people who are important on this nation? Do you believe or you are just hoping? Je, unaamini ama una matumaini tu? Are you believing that your marriage will be stronger than before? Je, unaamini ndoa yako itakuwa nzuri uh, kuliko nyuma? The key to fruitful faith is believing. Ile ufunguo wa imani nayo za matunda ni kuamini. Look at this man and I wish the church can reach that point because I'm also learning. He looked at Christ. He stopped thinking about the sick child and said, "Help." and my unbelief in other words i'm more sick than my child change me so that i can stand in the gap for my son yule baba anamwambia yesu nisaidie kutokuamini kwangu kwa maana kwa maneno mengine yeye ni mgonjwa zaidi ya mwanawe a person suffering from unbelief is worse than someone who is in an icu or hdu mtu ambaye haamini ni mbaya zaidi kushinda mtu ambaye yuko katika chumba cha watu mahututi if what you believe is dictated by what you see faith is not your portion kama unachoamini kinalinganishwa au kinatarajia kile unachoona hiyo imani haikupasi wewe amen it's not your portion Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 12 Paulo anasema katika kitabu cha Korintho wa kwanza 13 12 He says for now we see in a mirror dimly but then face to face now I know in part but then I shall know just as I also am known Maana wakati wa sasa tunaona kwa kioo kwa jinsi ya fumbo wakati ule tutakaoona uso kwa uso wakati wa sasa nafahamu kwa sehemu wakati thank you faith does not disclose everything openly imani haidhihirishi kila kitu waziwazi faith works best when you can see well imani hufanya kazi vizuri usipokuwa usipoweza kuona faith works well when you can see Well, imani hufanya kazi vizuri usipoweza kuona vizuri. If you want to move because you can see, you will never experience the joy of faith. Ukitaka kwenda kwa sababu unaona hauta uh, hautaona furaha ya imani. Now we know in part. Sasa tunafahamu kwa sehemu tu and that is why we walk by faith and not by sight and iposa tunatembea kwa imani na si kwa kuona faith leaves unanswered questions in our lives imani hujibu yale maswali ambayo hayana majibu faith leaves with unanswered questions faith leaves with unanswered questions in our lives Imani ruishi na maswali yasiyokuwa na majibu maishani mwetu. It exists better. It flourishes when we have no answers. Inafanya vyema wakati hatuna majibu. You remember the blind man who was healed? I went to the synagogue and they came and said, "Is this not the man who was begging at the at the gate?" And he said, "I am the person." And they started doubting and they keep kept on saying that man is a sinner and the man said i don't know whether he was a sinner one thing do i know that i was once blind but now i see i have no part in your doubts i have seen the miracle na yule mwanamume aliyekuwa ameponwa kutokana na upofu walipomwambia kwamba yesu ni mwenye dhambi akasema kama ni mwenye dhambi mimi sijui jambo moja najua nilikipu, nilikuwa kipofu na sasa naona they could not get the answers they wanted they called the parents the parents said he's of age ask him and let me tell you something the man stood still and when Christ met him when he was kicked out of the synagogue he asked him do you know the son of man and and and, and the man said i don't know him said i am here i said i believe he was healed and cured before he believed but because he believed christ is not what they are saying christ reappeared and reassured him of his total healing kwa maana aliamini kwamba yesu alimwamini yesu yesu akatokezea tena 
there are certain things that God has revealed. Kuna mambo ambayo Mungu amekudhihirishia. And that is what makes faith possible. Na because we have a point of reference. Imani ikawezekane. And that is what makes uh, gives us a point of reference. If God did that, then he can do it. He can do it now. Na hiyo ndiyo inaleta uwezekano wa kulinganisha kwamba kama alifanya hivi anaweza kufanya hivi. We can't go without saying that there are certain things God has kept a secret. Hatuwezi kuendelea bila kusema kuna mambo ambayo Mungu ameyaficha. And that is what makes faith necessary. Na hiyo ndiyo inafanya imani kuhitajika. Let me repeat that. There are things that God has revealed Kuna mambo ambayo Mungu ameadhihirisha and that is what makes faith possible because hi, we have a point of reference. Na hiyo ndiyo inafanya imani ikawezekane kwa maana kuna mahali ya kulinganisha. And there are things that God has kept as a secret. Na kuna mambo ambayo Mungu ameyaficha and that is what makes faith necessary. Na hiyo ndiyo inafanya imani ikahitajike. Unbelief is the greatest enemy of miracles and breakthroughs. Kutoamini ndio adui mkuu wa miujiza. His presence around us is never determined by how we feel. Uwepo wake hauwezi ukaujua kutokana na vile unahisi. But his love for us so don't give up in your quest to seek him just because you can't feel anything. Keep on seeking his face. Keep on running towards him. It's not about what you've embraced is what you have believed in. Si kile ambao umekumbatia lakini ni kile umeamini. Most of us stop at the point of receiving. Christ wants us to continue walking by faith. Christ wants to walk with us at every point without us seeing him because faith is what makes things possible. Yesu anataka tukaweze kuendelea kusonga mbele kwa maana imani ndio hufanya mambo yakawezekane. When I gave my life to Jesus, I have 10 minutes. When I gave my life to Jesus, Alipo Okoka, the cell leader who was following me up, I'll never forget him. His name is David Ngoda. Yule kiongozi wa ushirika wa nyumbani au kanisa la nyumbani alikuwa anaitwa David. This guy followed me up as a man would follow a lady they want to marry. Huyu alimfuatilia vile mwanamume anafuatilia msichana. This guy I would come home late deliberately so that I can find him gone but I would come to the house at 10 and David is in my house and when I would knock he would say ah umefika eh ah Thank God. Let's pray. Father, thank you for you brought him safely. Thank you. We'll continue to protect him. And then he'll, he'll go like, Amen. Every day he would follow me up. And one day I left work saying, I will put a stop and an end to this. And I came home drunk. Hallelujah. Na akaja nyumbani akiwa amelewa to put off David Ngoda ili amkomeshe David and I was like oh, leo tunijua leo you know and I came and he saw me he never judged me he told me the same statement he used to make umefika thank god wacha tushukuru <laughs> it's around 11 pm and he held my hands held my I mean, he prayed. Na then he ali, told me, Nizindikisha. And I was like, what's wrong with this man? Na alipo muona hakum hukumu. And I decided, let me escort this guy. Na akamua kumsindikiza. Ana shukisha steam do by staying here. That, because some of the village steam ita shuka. Lele, wacha ni mu escort tu. So as I was escorting him, I decided, oh, jamaa, ski, marashi ni mingi. So I decided to tell him the truth. I told him, unajua nini? Devi, let me tell you the truth. Mimi, I've decided to backslide. Na kamambia ukweli, ni miamua kurudi nyuma. Salvation is a feeling and I don't feel it any longer. Wokovu ni hisia na sasa sisiki tena. When I got saved, I would feel those goods bumps in kwa na feeling, yeah, yeah. But squeeze kila kitu. Ni kama vile ilikuwa kitambo. And the guy looked at me. We are in the middle of the street in a place called Don Home Shopping Center. And the guy stopped. David Ngoda was a kapumpum. 
he was heavy in a way. And a student, in, a student in campus by then, he looked at me, stopped and said, Hallelujah! Amen! I was like, hey, the guy is happy I'm backsliding. Na David alikuwa mtu mzito kidogo akafurahikia na kuruka juu. He rejoiced and he looked at me and said, you have just graduated. Na sasa umefuzu. I was like, what are you talking about? That one caught my eyes and attention. And I, he said, you see, salvation is not about feelings. Feelings are for the young ones. You've just matured. Now Christ wants you to know he's no longer only inside, but he's also by you. He wants you to walk by faith that is beside you. Amen. And I was like, <laughs> mission aborted. Akaniambia kwamba nime nimehitimu kwa sababu wokovu si wa hisia kwamba unamhisi nani ni imani kwamba yuko pamoja nawe nikasema ha okay nilifikiri nimefunga bao limekombolewa na nikajazwa lengine juu so have you ever seen a, a dog that is afraid they usually take the tail between the legs and they go home with a funny cry like Je, ukiwa umewahi kuona mbwa mwoga anaweka mkia wake katikati ya miguu na kuelekea nyumbani akitoa sauti Let me cut the long story short and tell you this I've never tasted alcohol ever since Hajawahi onja pombe tena kuanzia hiyo siku I got delivered because of a revelation that I never anticipated and I started walking by faith and everything my wife and I does today whatever we do today is by faith alipata ufunuo wa imani na kila kitu ambacho anafanya hata leo pamoja na mke wake ni kutokana na imani he will never leave me nor forsake me he will always be right there with me in troubled water in the deep seas in the skies and on the land he will always be by my side kwa maana anafahamu si kwa kuona lakini ni kwa kuamini all i need to do is to do away with unbelief kile cha muhimu cha kufanya ni akaweze kuachana na kutokuamini hallelujah amen his presence around us is never determined by how we feel uwepo wake hauwezi kushuhudiwa na kile unahisi but by his love lakini kwa upendo wake so don't kwenu. give up usikate tamaa in your quest to seek him just because you can't feel anything feelings are temporal katika safari ya kumtafuta kwa maana humhisi goosebumps are not meant for relationships na hizo hisia si za uhusiano so don't depend on them to determine his presence. Kwa hivyo usizitegemee kupata some, uwepo wake. Some of you you go home and say, "Leo sikusikia hii." Tuki worship his presence. No, goosebumps are not made for faith. Faith is there to take you where goosebumps can't make it. Imani nataka ikuchukue mahali hisia na msisimko haiwezi kukupeleka. Come on somebody. After excitement you go out and meet the world and find the world hasn't changed because it does not ascribe to your faith and therefore it discourages you again what will happen when discouragement comes to knocking your door my friend it is faith that will sustain you ni imani ndio itakayo kushikilia have a fruitful faith like never before kuwa na imani inayozaa matunda vile haujawahi kuwa as i finish genesis 22 verse 2 through 8 katika kitabu cha mwanzo 22 hadi 8 Let's go there very quickly. Then he said, "Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you." So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and he uh, and he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted uh, his eyes and saw the place afar off and Abraham said to his young men stay here with the donkey he uh, the lad and I will go yonder and worship and we will come back to you 
So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and he laid it on Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife and the two of them went together. Uh, but Isaac spoke to uh, Abraham his father and said, my father. And he said, here I am, my son. Then he said, look, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Verse 8. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Don't read it in Swahili. You're going to paraphrase as I speak. Amen. Listen. Skeliza. Abraham's faith in God Imani ya Ibrahimu kwa Mungu was so great that nothing could have been of greater importance than obeying him. Hakuna kitu kilikuwa cha muhimu kwake zaidi ya kumtii. Just think about it. He had waited for this son until he was a hundred. Alikuwa amesubiri huyu kupata mwana mpaka akiwa miaka miyamoja. His wife was past the age of bearing children. Mke wake alikuwa amepita umri wa kuzaa. And now God is saying, can you go and slaughter your son for me? Na sasa mungu anamambia, nendo ukaweze kumtoa manao sadaka. But faith he arose. He never, it's not recorded, he told the wife anything. And that proves that Abraham was a man. There are things that men don't tell. They just go quiet and say, Hii ni kiambia bibi kita umana. But that's not our portion as this church. We tell our wives everything because they are also being spoken to by God. Is somebody listening to me? Amen. Uto tumoneno tuwasiri tafadhali usweke. Hii likuwa ni laana ya Abraham. Hiyo likuwa ni laana ya Abraham undio. Abraham was just a man, but you are not a man. You are a born again man. Wewe si mwanaume tu. Abraham had just been born once, but you've been born twice, both in the physical and in the spiritual. And now you know your wife is also part and parcel of you. Sisi, Tell them everything. Tumezaliwa mara mbili kimwili na kiroho kwa hivyo ambia mke wako kila kitu. Now. Abraham is teaching us three things very fast as I finish. Abraham anatufundisha mambo matatu kwa haraka. Number 1. Kwanza fruitful faith take action. Imani inayozaa matendo huchukua hatua. You just don't believe and sit in what you believe in. You believe and take action. Wewe hauamini na kukaa hapo lakini unachukua hatua. Abraham believed God when he was told he will be made a, a, a great nation. When God said I will multiply you, he believed and walked with, walked with God. When he was told bring your son, let me go, uh, go, go and sacrifice your son for me. He rose up without raising question and took action. Abraham alipo ambiwa kwamba atapata mwana na kizazi aliamini na alipo ambiwa pia kamtoe mwanawe kama sadaka alichukua hatua. Let me tell you how little our faith is and how useless our faith is. When was the last time you heard God telling you, you go to God and say, we don't have money, I haven't paid rent, I haven't, I haven't paid school fees, I haven't paid for my token electricity, uh, for token water, and uh, uh, mm, the shopkeeper is still demanding for uh, the money. And then you look at your pocket, you have 5,000, and God tells you, go give an offering in church. When was the last time you were in that situation and you obeyed? Ni lini mwisho ulikuwa katika hiyo hali ya kwamba uko na mahitaji na uko na 1500 na unasikia sauti ya Mungu ikwambia nenda utoe hii pesa sadaka kanisani na ukatenda. Let me, don't answer me because I know you didn't you started negotiating with God. No 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 God you know let me first pay half rent. Na mwenye duka ndio kesho nisikose kukopa half and uh, and then you tell God we'll negotiate next month. That is what we do as men. Abraham rose up and said he is the only son, but you gave him to me after all. I can still give him back to you. Ibrahimu akasema ndiyo mana wapeke, lakini wewe ndiyo li nipatia, nami nitakukabidi, wewe. Abraham behaved like what Pastor Don says. Pastor Don says, if it's too little, give it to God. 
He will multiply it. <laughs> if it is too little, probably it's a seed. Go plant it in the house and see it germinate for a big harvest next season. Come on now. Only, only a few people got what I said, oh, yes. but it's deep rooted in my heart. Abraham had faith in God and took action through obedience. Because tough times are not meant to bring us down, but to put our faith to test. Okay, Kiswahili kimegonga ukuta. Number two. Yapili. Fruitful faith is patience in obedience. Imani ya kuzama tunda iko na saburi katika utiifu. Fruitful faith is patience in obedience. Na ni ya saburi katika utiifu. The young men who were with him had faith in him and waited as he, uh, 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 at his word. Wale wanaume walikuwa wakitembea naye walikuwa na imani kwake na wakamsubiri. They had faith in Abraham but Abraham had faith in God. Walikuwa wanamwamini Abraham lakini Abraham alikuwa anamwamini Mungu. Listen to Abraham's words. Stay here with the donkeys as the young man and I go there to give a sacrifice then come back. Who said Isaac was to come back? He was to be the sacrifice. But Abraham had faith and said, we are coming back. That is faith in action. Na Ibrahimu anawambia, kaini hapa msubiri, mimi na huyu kijana tunaenda kumabudu mungu na tutarudi. Patience in obedience. The young men waited. Saburi katika utiifu na hao, watu waka msubiri. 2021. As a church, let's believe God to have a fruitful faith like never before. Number three, which is my final point. Fruitful faith trusts in obedience. Na imani inayo za matunda huwamini utifu. Fruitful faith trusts in obedience. Isaac obeyed even when he didn't see a lamp. Abraham had faith in his father. The servants had faith with their master. And therefore waited patiently. Isaac had faith in his father. That even though there is no lamb, we are going to give a sacrifice as he said. And belief would have told Isaac there is no lamb. Let's go fast to the market and buy one. And belief would have told Abraham through Isaac, you are a rich man, you have so many lambs, you have so many sheep, you have so many of this world. Can't we just go to the ship and get one, go with the same to the mountain and offer it unto the Lord? Kuto kwa mini kungalikuwa kumemchawishi Abraham kuenda katika moja wa kondo zake na kumchukua. But Isaac chose to believe his father. When the father said the Lord would provide for himself. That statement bore fruit and a lamb who was caught in the thicket when Abraham was just about to offer his son. Na hayo maneno ya kaza matunda kwa mana kondo alikuwa katika kichaka. Faith may be a personal thing, but it requires obedience from your surroundings or from the people working with you for it to be actualized. Faith may be a personal thing, 
but it requires obedience from your surroundings or from the people working with you for it to be actualized. People who are surrounding you can kill your faith or support it as you move on. Whom are you surrounding yourself with before you can demand for a fruitful faith? Are they discouragers or encouragers? Because some will agree with you and support you. So that your faith can increase. But others may oppose you so that you can focus on their on your faith, uh, so that you can lose focus on your faith and on your God. Faith is not what. Faith is not and was never meant to be a communal affair. But a personal belief and an experience based on one's conviction. And that's why Abraham left the servants. He knew there is a distance as to where a servant can come up to. And there is a distance where a master needs a son. Let me tell you, not everyone is meant to see you actualize your faith. Be very careful. Not everyone who is cheering you up believes you can make it. Some of them are there to milk you. Therefore, learn and ask God to give you the grace to understand how far should I go with these people? And who amongst them can be a son to go with me a little bit farther? Look at Jesus with his 12 disciples. He left the others and took three. And when he reached with them where he was going to pray, he still left the other three, the three and went on his own because levels are different when it comes to actualizing your faith. Faith has levels. There's the level of being cheered for. There is a faith, there is a level in faith that we call the level of reality. Where everyone who does not believe in the same thing you believe in will not help you. Let me finish. In verse 5, Abraham tells the servants, stay here with the donkeys. Abraham wanawambia watumishi kaeni hapa na punda. You know donkeys can only be managed through beating. And if you don't overwork a donkey, it may never be fruitful. Na usipo ifonyisha kazi ngumu ineza kuwa haita kuwa ya maana. The level of the servant was the level of driving and taking care of donkeys. But the level of Abraham and Isaac was the level of obedience, submission, and tender belief before the Lord. And therefore he made a step of faith by saying, we are going to give a sacrifice, then come back with the Lord. He never told them I'm going to offer my son, though that was the intention. Abraham made this statement based on how he knew God. Your faith will depend on a level you have or a relationship you have with God. Your faith is dependent on your relationship with God. How well do you know the God who has ordered you to be where you are 
and to be doing what you're doing. How well do you know this God? Unamfahamu kiasi gani yule Mungu amai kuongoza na kukuamrisha? And Abraham's faith in God drove him into a prophetic statement that we are coming back and then he said the Lord will provide for himself a lamb and let me tell you on the same mountain ridge the Lord not only provided a lamb during Abraham but he also provided his only begotten son our Lord Jesus Christ on the same mount ridge and let me tell you something else you and I today we can profess that he is our Lord and Savior because Abraham spoke prophetically out of faith amen Abraham akatoa unabii ama akatoa maneno ya kinabii kwa maana katika ule mlima kulikuwa na kondoo na hapo hata Yesu Kristo alisulubiwa katika mojawapo ya hiyo milima Daniel 11:32 says those who do wickedly against the covenant he shall corrupt with flattery but the people who know their god shall be strong and carry out a great exploit wale watu wanao mamini Mungu watafanya makuu watafanya makuu Abraham believed God and did wonders in the scriptures Ibrahimu akamamini Mungu na akafanya makuu katika maandiko Please remember faith is a blank check of what you hope for and can only grant you what you write on it Kumbuka imani ni hundi iliyo wazi na unaweza kupokea tu kutokana na kile unachoandika. Rise up on your feet. I don't know what you're going to write on your feet today. Mama kwa miguu yako, sijii utaenda kuandika nini katika hundi yako. Don't let your faith be dictated by your, by your surroundings. Don't let your faith be dictated write something else I can make it. Write something else like I will do it. Write something like I believe he's able write something like i believe situations will not remain the same write something like god with you all things are possible andika kitu mfano kupitia wewe mungu yote yanawezekana lift up your hands nua mikono yako fruitful faith trust in obedience imani ya kuzaa matunda huamini katika utifu lift up those hands Start thanking God and speak like this man who was pleading with Jesus to heal his son and say Lord help on my unbelief Come on speak to God Pata help. sauti yako na umwambie Mungu maneno kama ya huyu baba ya kwamba Mungu unisaidie kutokuamini kwangu Unbelief can block you from seeing God hearing God and even experiencing God kutokuamini kunaweza kuzuia kutoka kusikia kwa Mungu repent of your unbelief right now tubu kutokana na kutokuamini kwako hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus thank you lord help our unbelief oh god help our unbelief help our unbelief our unbelief lord has caused us not to walk with you and enjoy a fruitful type of faith help our unbelief help our unbelief saidia kuto kuamini kwetu we need you tunakuhitaji father in the name of jesus we thank you baba katika jina la yesu tunakushukuru for we know whatever we ask you grant us maana tunaamini chochote tunachokuomba utatupatia and i know lord you are granting it unto us this moment na najua unaenda kutupatia asubuhi ya leo by faith kwa imani i pray that each and every person in this church those who are in the service and those who are not naomba kila mmoja ambaye yuko hapa na wale ambao hawakofika lord they are going to experience your presence and they are going to experience your joy naomba kwamba tenda kuona uwepo wako na furaha yako are we are committing ourselves to you tunatikabidhi kwako knowing that from today henceforth jua kuanzia leo kuendelea we will rise by faith tutainuka kwa imani and do those things that we thought we can't do na kutenda yale mambo tulidhani hatuwezi lord take us to that level that you want us to go 
we release ourselves to you. Lord, we are praying for wisdom. Father, Father, we are praying that this church will be full of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Cause us not to walk in fear and to walk in deception. We ask you, just like it was last Sunday, that we will desire to hear your voice like never before so that we can be fruitful like never before so that we can have a faith that is so fruitful we thank you for hearing us in Jesus name Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, let's give the hand clap of faith. I declare that there will be fruitfulness in yourself. Amen. Come on, come on, come on. I declare that there will be fruitfulness in yourself. Amen. Fruitful faith at your workplace. Amen. Fruitful faith with your colleagues. Fruitful faith as you listen to God. Amen. Fruitful faith in everything you put your hands to do. Amen. May God bless you.